PV Power Up, serving photovoltaic contractors and integrators with practical information and answers. Today we're here at Love Creek Nature Center. This is a nature center in southwestern Michigan, and they're installing a new 9.5 kilowatt solar system. This is a 16-inch standing seam metal roof. The panels that are being installed are PVL 144s. This is a unisolar product and they're 15 and a half inches wide, approximately 18 feet long, so it's the perfect panel for this type of installation. The solar system is being installed on a metal roof. Now a metal roof is an ideal substrate for a new solar system. Whether you're using thin film technology like these unisolar panels today, or you're using glass crystalline modules and holding them down with an S5 clip. The warranty on the panels is about 25 years typically, so you really want a roof that is going to have a warranty equal to or in excess of the solar panels. The solar panels may cost four or five times as much as the roof per square foot, so it's critical that a high quality roof is used underneath the solar panels. One of the advantages of metal is if you're using a thin film product, you can pull the backing off of it and stick it right onto the metal roof or if you're going to use a crystalline or glass module, you can hold them right to the roof with S5 clips. In either case, you're avoiding the needing for racking material. Another advantage of metal roofs is that you can apply thin film panels right to the metal roof, or if you're using glass crystalline modules, you can apply them right to the metal roof with S5 clips. In either case, you're going to avoid the extra expense, time, and labor involved in installing a racking system that may be required on another type of roof. We're here with Tom Topash of Turtle Island Wind and Solar. Now, this is your solar job, and can you tell us a little bit about the client and the job? This is Love Creek Nature Center. It is um, a part of the Berrien County Park System, a place that I have visited for 30 years, and I've watched this place grow. When we were skiing here last year, the, I would happen to be with uh, T.J. Kanzuzuski, who comes here a lot and was saying, what an ideal roof. It took a while, but here we are today getting it installed. We've known the people that are here. We wrote the grant for them and made sure that they didn't have to, in this case, have output because it is a, a nonprofit organization, one that we believe in. and. The naturalists here and the environmentalists inside of me, it all, um, it all fits really nicely. So you help Love Creek uh, apply for and, and receive a grant then? Mm -hmm. And then they, you were awarded the job after they received the grant. Mm -hmm. And now, um, how, who did you hire to install the panels and how is that portion of it going? Well, I think you had mentioned they've completed the laying out of it mm -hmm. in uh, just a day and a half. So. Dave Hurd and his small company, along with uh, Dick Carper, the licensed electrician, they created this little team to make it happen. And it has gone extremely smoothly. Okay, so as you look back on it, you had the construction portion, then you had the grant application. Which, was, uh, which took more time and effort? Surprise, not surprisingly, putting together all of the different components of the grant that was uh, the biggest challenge. And I think that uh, everyone was ple very pleasantly surprised that we got the, the full amount for this organization and, and they don't have any dollars coming from their own budget for this. Outstanding. And then the roofing contractors, as you uh, uh, worked with them, how did you go about selecting? Uh, were you going to use electricians or roofers? How did you make that decision? I don't know if we had said this yet, but um, this is our first installation, so the, yeah, that was um, something of a quagmire for me to just negotiate to figure out how does one make that happen. Um, I'm a retired school principal. We never did this kind of thing, although I built playground equipment before. Um, and it was a matter of making sure that as a novice that we had an experienced company and uh, Dave and his crew have installed several. It's hard to find. Um, the electrician, this is his first time, so he's made lots of calls and he's, you know, the, the learning curve is steep for the first round. 
And how I chose them was um, just making sure that we had the anchor, being Dave, that knew something about it. Outstanding. Okay, very good. Is there uh, anything different you would do as you approach the project? Oh, they learned a lot between yesterday and today. Okay. And it's all about the weather. Um, there was, uh, a, it was really challenging at 87 degrees, direct sun, the, uh, the application, the adhering material is extraordinarily strong, no mistakes allowed. So today, um, overcast and cooler, they find this to be ideal conditions and it has gone very much smoother and uh, so everybody learned something. Very good. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it, Tom. Sure. We're down here in the basement and the electricians have installed two of these Sunny Boy 5000s. Now this came as part of the Matana solar kit and these panels are pretty heavy, weigh about 175 pounds each. The inverter looks pretty complicated, there's a lot of things going on in here, but for our purposes and for the electrician it's really quite simple. Underneath the inverter comes with a DC disconnect and this is where all of our connections are made to the incoming power and then the power going out. Once those panels are hooked together in strings we have six circuits so we have 12 wires, six positive, six negative. Those wires are going to run from the roof down here to the basement. On the left side of this DC disconnect that's integral part of the inverter you're going to, on the left side, install the positive wires, and each one of those connections has a fuse built into this DC disconnect. On the right side of the left portion of the box, you're going to put in the negative wires. So all of our incoming power from the solar system comes in on the left side, and then our outgoing power comes out of the right side. We have two poles, L1, L2, and a neutral plus a ground that are going to run back to the panel board. And this particular inverter uses a 30 amp uh, two pole breaker. Ideally you're going to install it in the new panel board or an existing panel board at the bottom of the panel board and we'll explain that in a moment. But suffice to say that the electrical work is really quite simple. We have six wires coming in in this installation and four wires coming out. Now you may be wondering why there isn't a ground in this particular installation we're using PVL 144s, the unisolar panels, and they're completely encased in uh, plastic. There's no exposed metal parts, so there is no grounding for the panels. It's a little different case if we're installing glass or crystalline modules which have a metal frame around them. Then we would be running a ground, an equipment ground, back to the inverter. These inverters are really smart. So as we're leaving this inverter and going to the panel board, it will automatically sense whether it's a 240 or a 208 system, and it will automatically adjust its output to match the building's AC voltage. We're going to install a 30 amp two pole circuit breaker in this panel board to receive the output from the inverter. This is a 250 amp panel board. Now you get to put up to 20% of the rated bus size of the panel board in incoming PV power or alternative energy power. So in this case our incoming breakers are rated at 30 amps. We have a 250 amp panel board so 20 percent of that says we can hook up 50 amps worth of incoming power into this existing panel board. Now we would like to install the incoming power in general at the bottom of the panel board. The reason we do this is if we have a heavy load in the middle of the panel board that is maybe in excess of 250 amps because now this panel board can have 250 amps coming in from above and up to 30 amps coming in from below. And as that uh, power moves to the circuit breakers, if we have a heavy load in the middle, it'll receive some power from below, some power from above but that bus will never see more than 250 amps anywhere on the bus. If we were to have a heavy load at the bottom and have the incoming AC power plus the PV power coming in at the top, 
what can theoretically happen is we have 250 amps going down the bus plus an additional 30 amps from our new circuit breaker going down the bus. So the bus, even though it's rated at 250 amps, would have 280 amps going down it. Now it's, it's safe and that's within code, but it's just good practice to install the PV input at the bottom of the panel. It eliminates that potential for having extra amperage on the bus in any one spot. We would like to thank our sponsor, Innovatus Solar, a turnkey integrator and distributor of PV modules, inverters, and all the additional equipment to install a state-of-the-art photovoltaic system. Visit Innovatus Solar at inovateusolar.com to find a dealer, purchase PV equipment, inquire about dealerships, or speak with a salesperson about Innovative Solar's turnkey services, including feasibility studies, engineering, construction, and financing. <laughs>